The term capital is one of the major reasons that we seem to be unable to have an intelligent conversation about the economy. Because the term capital, it's actually the same, you know, in business school, I, I know in business school, you use the term resources, assets, uh, capital, um, I think those, those are the ones that come to mind immediately. None of those tell you whether the person who's using the term is talking about a real resource like land or a building or technology or human skills or any of the things that are absolutely essential to life and to a productive process. Or whether they're simply talking about money, which properly understood is nothing but an accounting chit. You think about it. There is nothing outside the human mind that can recognize it. It's totally intangible. And the fascinating thing is we organize our economy around the idea that money is the ultimate constraint. Wow, isn't that odd? Because as we all see, if you're paying attention, the Federal Reserve can create it with a keystroke. Trillions of dollars. Well, the market's inflated or it goes away and trillions of dollars just simply disappear overnight. Real capital doesn't disappear instantly. The fascinating thing about an economy, you have, you have a financial crash and the economy comes to a stop. Now you've got all the same people, the same skills, you've got the same building, you've got the same technology, you've got the same needs. You have everything except somehow these numbers flowing around on computers stop flowing and the whole thing stops. Now, that is part of a process <laughs> of reducing the whole of society into a condition of slavery. You know, there's different, there's different levels of slavery. Some is less, is more tolerable than others, but it is essentially, uh, you know, different forms of involuntary servitude. And the kind of situation we're in currently where people are desperate for any kind of job to get any kind of money that they can get because it's essential to get their food and water to live and a place to, a place to put over their head. all to get money to be able to have access to the real assets that corporations increasingly own. I'm kind of backing into some of these subjects, so it may, may not be as clear as I would, would like what I'm saying here, but this, this comes out of the, you know, the experience working overseas in international development. You know, we're told, told by the World Bank that, uh, well, actually, I'm, I'm kind of going all around your question. <laughs> We're told by the World Bank and IMF that you know, the, the market system, capitalism, is eliminating global poverty. Now, if you go back and take that apart, the development process, the movement of capitalism or the corporate control into the economies of poor countries was a process of pushing people off the land the means by which they, they earned their, they created their livelihood without money, but many of them live quite well in terms of a healthy diet and, and healthy families and strong communities and secure shelter and all that sort of thing, but they had no money. Well, some people claim they, they really weren't poor until development pushed them off of the farm into the factories, into the itinerant, um, agricultural workforce and left them dependent on money and then the World Bank comes and say look at this see we're ending poverty we've got people now earning more than a dollar and a half a day so they're better off you begin to get into this framework and you see what's what's happening in terms of the whole uh, the whole global system so part, you know part of this regaining control uh, is part of partly also reducing our dependence on the market economy. You know, youth going back 
to the land, growing their own food. Young couples going back and taking care of their own children, cooking our own meals, uh, things that we do as a family to reduce our dependence on money. Anyhow, that's, there, there's, so many, there's so many dimensions to this, and we, we could go on and talk about the whole banking system and so forth, but I think we need to 